It is time for something crazy, the 1-9 remembering page. This is a shout out to Juliana Lopez. Thank you for commenting on it, and I do take requests. So it's a factor puzzle. I'm looking at connections through it. So is there a greatest common factor? I'm gonna look through the 10 and the 12 first. I know it's two, because it can't be five, but I put the two across on a row, the six on the right-hand column, and the five on the left. It ends up being 35 in the magic square. This time, I can either choose 40 and 15, and I'm going to go with that one. I know it's 5. It's either going to have to be 5 or 10 to uh, accommodate the 40, or 20, I guess. Um, so 5 is their greatest common factor, and 5 multiplied by 3 gives me 18. 3 is the column. 3 multiplied by 6 is 18, gives me the row of 6, and then I catch myself, I'm like, oh, Wait, no, I could totally turn that zero into an eight. Six multiplied by eight is 48. I got too excited. Okay, this time either 36 or 63 or 36 and 32. Looking at 36 and 63, I know the greatest common factor is nine. They're both, um, you add the digits together, they make nine. Uh, so I have four, a column on the left of four and a column on the right is seven. Four multiplied by eight gives me 32, uh, eight for a row. Eight multiplied by seven is 56. This time I'm going to fill out a uh, ratio table and then I will draw a graph. So I notice there's a pattern, one, two, three, four on the number of pounds. And I'm also looking at three multiplied by something gave me six, four multiplied by something gave me eight. And it's going to be 2. 3 multiplied by 2 gave me 6. 4 multiplied by 2 gave me 8. I'm going to multiply all of these numbers by 2. And I will have 2 and 4 at the top. I am just really picky about graphs. So I like to have the x and y axis labeled. Um, if you don't, it's really hard to say what you're actually measuring. And it's a really good, good idea to get in the habit of it. So my X and my Y, and right now I'm going to really work on, like I'm making a promise right now, putting it into the universe, I need to make sure the X does not look like the Y. So I'm going to just change the Y, now I'm writing it. They always start at zero, that's origin. Um, you'll hear that a lot throughout the book. And my X comes first, I go across, horizontal first. In this case, I'm going to go over one and up two. Two is my Y. My next ones are two and four. So I'm gonna go over two and up four. My next one, I'm gonna go three over six, over three and up six. And of course, I'm gonna go over four and up eight. I connect these, um, starting with, uh, the origin, or if you have a ruler, you can go all the way up. Either way, um, they all come through zero. That's just something you get in the habit of thinking about. And then things get totally cuckoo crazy for Cocoa Puffs uh, when we include all four um, quadrants of the of a coordinate plane. Ah, it's really exciting. It's towards the end of the units um, that we have together, probably like in May. So this time we're representing a situation with an equation. Sometimes writing an equation can be intimidating. So section A in the stadium has 30 rows of seats with 20 seats in each row. Section B has four times as many seats as section A. How many seats are in section B? So I can use parentheses if I'm going to write an equation, but I'm going to pick a variable to stand for what I'm looking for, N. N is that the number of seats inside section B. So N is equal to something, right? So I could model this. I could draw 30, I could draw 30 rows with 20 seats in them. And I could easily count that all up for the sake of time. Um, and I don't think you guys really want to like watch me do that. So I could draw, you know, 30 rows, 20 seats in them. That's a way to model math. Modeling math uh, will set you apart from someone who's just, you know, a human calculator. Modeling math is a good strategy to have. I'm going to put those in parentheses because section B has four times as many seats. That in itself gave me the clue, hey, I'm going to be multiplying. So I'm going to multiply 30 by 20. And then I will take that and multiply that product by four. So if I multiply 30 by 20, I can do it different ways. I can multiply the three and get six, uh, multiply by two to get six and add two zeros, get 600. I could go through the total um, you know, standard way of multiplying and get a, again, a total of 600 if I add it all up. And I'm going to take that product and I will multiply it by four. Why? Again, section B has four times as many seats as section A. So how many seats are there? So total between, 
Uh, in section B, there's 2,400 seats. So we're going to stretch our thinking. A balloon vendor sold 225 balloons on Saturday. He sold red, yellow, and blue balloons. He sold 100 red balloons and 25 more red balloons than blue. How many yellow balloons did he sell? Oh, man, I'm not going to be able to draw a picture of this that would fit on this piece of paper. But I do know I'm going to start with 225. Why? That's my total balloons. I already have my sum. Or um, as we'll find out, I do use more, um, more, than one, um, more than one operation. So I have my 100 and I'm going to subtract. Uh, and I'm going to have my 100 and I will add that to the difference of 100 and minus 25. Now that 100 is the red balloons. The In the parentheses, 100 minus 25, that's the total of blue balloons. It said one, uh, he sold 100 red balloons and 25 more red than blue. So red, 100, and he sold more red than blue. So it's 100 minus 25, and the N are my yellow balloons. It's a number, that magic number I'm looking for. So 100 plus 75, 100 minus 25 is 75, 175 plus N is equal to 225. I'm going to do the same thing on each side. I'm going to subtract to solve. 225 minus 175 is equal to dun, 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 50. He sold 50 yellow balloons. So if I add